One robot release can make the world cheer, then one real-world moment flips it. A city vote, a regulator letter, or a recall notice, and the robot is paused. Stay with me because these are not lab demos. These are 15 real robot rollouts that got stopped, slowed, or pulled back right when success looked guaranteed. Driverless Freeze Picture this. You stand on a curb, your ride arrives, and no one is in the driver's seat. That was the big promise of Cruise Robotaxis in California. These cars were giving rides in real neighborhoods not just circling a test track. Then a serious safety incident involving a pedestrian changed the direction of the program. California regulators stepped in, and the fully driverless service was suspended. What made people pause was the speed of the shift. One week it was a symbol of progress, the next week it was a reminder that trust is earned mile by mile. It also showed how strict the rules can be when a robot shares space with humans. If the system cannot prove it is consistently safe, the rollout can stop instantly. Before Robotaxis, the spotlight was on test cars. Uber ran self-driving testing in Arizona, and the public watched closely because it felt like a race toward the future. Then a major collision happened, and a pedestrian did not survive. After that, testing was suspended. For many people, this was the moment autonomy stopped sounding like a party trick and started sounding like a responsibility. It also showed a hard truth. A robot can be great at lanes and speed, but streets are full of surprises. Lighting changes. People cross in unexpected places. Cars drift slightly. The smallest delay in decision-making can matter. This case reshaped how companies talk about testing how cities approve it and how the public judges it. Tesla uses names like autopilot and full self-driving, and those words can shape behavior. If a label sounds like the car is fully in charge, some drivers may relax too much. California regulators looked closely at how features were described and raised the possibility of action if marketing created the wrong expectations. This case is a reminder that language is part of safety. A name can nudge a driver into trusting the system more than they should. And when trust rises too fast, attention drops. In the real world, attention is everything. Sidewalk Vote now shift from highways to sidewalks. Delivery robots look small and friendly like a rolling cooler on a mission. San Francisco still treated them seriously. The city set strict limits including permits and rules about where robots could operate. In some areas, the city even limited how many could be active. Why? Because sidewalks are a shared space. Parents push strollers, teens ride scooters, older adults walk slowly. People using mobility devices need smooth paths and clear space. One robot that blocks a ramp can ruin someone's whole day. The interesting part is that the city did not wait for chaos. It set rules early because public space is not a playground for experiments. New York City has some of the busiest sidewalks on Earth. FedEx tested a delivery robot called Roxo built to carry packages without a human walking beside it. The city responded with a clear stop message. New York told FedEx to halt the test pointing to safety and permission issues. This story is less about one robot and more about the setting. New York sidewalks are a moving puzzle. Bikes, delivery workers, street vendors, tourists, subway stairs, and sudden crowds. Even a polite robot can become a surprise obstacle. The city's message was simple. If you want robots on public sidewalks, you need clear approval and strong rules first. You cannot treat New York like an empty parking lot. Quick check-in. If you had to trust one robot first, which would it be? Driverless cars or sidewalk delivery robots? Comment car or sidewalk and tell me your reason. Toronto looked at delivery robots too and decided to pause them in public space. Leaders raised concerns about safety and accessibility, and robot delivery on sidewalks was suspended or restricted. What is interesting is that Toronto's choice was not a reaction to one viral moment. It was a decision based on how hard it is to guarantee equal access for everyone. Sidewalk rules are not just about speed, they are about fairness. A crowded sidewalk is already tough for older adults' kids and anyone carrying bags. Add robots and the space gets tighter. Toronto basically said prove it can work safely for everyone, not just for people who can easily step aside. That is a different kind of safety, and it matters. Mall Patrol Security robots sound simple. Patrol observe and alert humans when something seems off. Nightscope built a security robot called K5, and it appeared in public places like malls. Then a widely discussed incident involved a toddler who was knocked down and had the robot roll onto their foot. The bigger point is not speed or AI, it is design in crowded spaces. 
A robot moves on its own and people assume it will avoid them, but kids move unpredictably. They turn fast stop suddenly and change direction without warning. If a robot cannot safely handle those human patterns, it should not be roaming around families. This incident became a lesson in how real-life movement is harder than any lab test. In San Francisco, a security robot pilot at the SPCA triggered a different reaction. Critics argued that using a security robot could make some people feel singled out, especially people already struggling. The robot became a symbol, not just a tool. The pilot was stopped after public pressure. This story shows that safety is not only physical, it is also social. A robot can be quiet, slow, and polite, but if people feel watched or unwelcome, the project loses support. That matters because public spaces run on trust. If a robot breaks the feeling of community, it will not survive in that environment no matter how advanced it is. If you are enjoying this real-world robot list, hit like and subscribe. It helps more people find the video, and it keeps these stories coming. Backyard Heat Now we step away from cities and into the backyard. Robotic pool cleaners look like friendly helpers that glide underwater while you relax. Iper released a model called Seagull Pro, and later there was a recall because the charging adapter could overheat. That matters, because charging is the quiet part of robotics that people forget. Chargers live near towels, cardboard boxes, cleaning supplies, and random storage. A recall notice turns a cool gadget into a checklist. People start checking model numbers, checking adapters, and rethinking where they plug things in. It is a reminder that robots are not only software, they are electricity and heat sitting in real homes with real clutter. Iper had another recall with a different pool cleaner model tied to overheating concerns. Two separate notices in the same category show how hard the last mile of hardware can be. You can build a smart robot test it, ship it, and still discover an issue after thousands of people use it in different homes. Different outlets, different temperatures, different storage habits. A robot is not used in a perfect lab. It is used in messy real life. That is why recalls exist. They are a way of saying we learned something after launch, and we are acting on it. It is not a fun story, but it is a real part of modern robotics. Next is a yard robot with a home base. STIHL sells robotic lawn mowers that return to a docking station. A recall was issued because moisture exposure could lead to a short circuit and a serious safety issue at the dock. This is the kind of story that makes you picture the scene. A dock often sits near a house wall, under a fence, or close to a shed. That is exactly where sprinklers do and rain can find their way. The tricky part is that many people set up these systems and then stop thinking about them. The robot becomes background, but charging bases are active electrical spots and outdoor conditions can be harsh. This recall became a reminder that outdoor robots need outdoor level protection. Husqvarna automowers look like small machines that quietly cut grass in neat patterns. Some models were recalled because of battery overheating concerns. What makes this case feel surprising is how calm these robots seem. They move slowly, avoid obstacles, and return to charge like they are following a routine. That calm vibe can hide the fact that they carry stored energy. Heat charging cycles and outdoor conditions can stress parts over time. This story also shows why the robot lawnmower is a tougher challenge than it looks. It lives outdoors. It deals with hot days, wet mornings, and long hours. When a recall happens, it reminds everyone that the yard is not a gentle environment for electronics. Vacuum Battery Now to a robot almost everyone recognizes, the robot vacuum. Some Eufy RoboVac X8 hybrid battery packs were recalled in Canada over overheating concerns. This story hits close because robot vacuums are designed to run while you are busy. They roam under couches, return to charge, and start again later. Independence is the selling point. But when an overheating concern appears, people start paying attention to the charging spot, the battery type, and how long the robot sits plugged in. It changes how you treat something that used to feel effortless. Instead of set it and forget it, it becomes set it and check it. That shift is exactly what a recall does. It turns convenience back into awareness. We are close to the end, so I want your take. Which surprised you? More street robots or home robots? Comment street or home and tell me what made it stand out. Surgery Alert Some robot stories are not about one dramatic moment. They are about what we believe a robot can do. Now we enter the most serious arena for robots, surgery. 
The Senhance surgical system faced an FDA Class Y recall tied to concerns like unintended movement or malfunction. In a setting like this, even tiny movement matters. Surgical robotics is built around precision and consistency, and that is why regulators treat these notices with maximum seriousness. This is also why medical robots are so impressive. They operate in a world where accuracy is everything. A recall here does not mean the entire idea is bad. It means the standards are extremely strict and every potential issue is treated like a big deal. Another well-known surgical system, Da Vinci Xi, also had an FDA recall notice listed as Class II, which is serious but not the highest category. These notices show how strict medicine is. If a risk exists, it gets documented, addressed, and tracked. Which case shocked you? Should releases slow down? Let us know in the comments below. Like always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give us a big thumbs up and leave us some love in the comments section. To keep up to date with all of our awesome videos, be sure to hit subscribe and turn your notifications on to never miss a thing. Until next time, do take good care of yourself.